Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Now, today we're continuing our coverage of the uh, ongoing civil war taking place inside of the former state of uh, Ethiopia. And today, I wanted to have a look at some new information that is coming to light. And uh, this information is something that uh, is is not um, something that uh, we did not anticipate uh, that had occurred, but had been suspected and had been documented uh, in terms of what has happened uh, inside of uh, the uh, Tigray region. So as we know, uh, back in 2021, the Tigray region, um, or the, uh, the early part of uh, 2020, the, the latter part of 2020, the Tigray region was invaded and occupied uh, by the tandem armies of the uh, despotic regime of Eritrea to the north and uh, the, uh, the Abi loyalist government uh, based in uh, what became the former state of Ethiopia. And uh, these forces initially launched a major, major uh, uh, military operation under the auspice of a so-called law enforcement operation. And uh, these joint forces, military forces uh, of Eritrea and uh, Ethiopia, uh, one, two of the uh, greatest uh, in terms of sheer manpower uh, in sub-Sahara Africa, especially when you look at uh, Eritrea and its uh, despotic regime in terms of the uh, national conscription policies, again, occupied uh, much of uh, the uh, Tigray region. And when that occupation occurred, uh, we observed uh, internet uh, blackouts, communication blackouts, the arrests of uh, journalists, the arrests of uh, both of, of non-governmental uh, organizations uh, that uh, were there to assist uh, in the, uh, the, uh, the challenges that uh, are there within the uh, Tigray region. And uh, we, uh, we, we saw these activities, and then you have to ask the question, why? Why the media blackout? Uh, obviously, uh, part of that uh, is, uh, was under the auspice of this uh, so-called law enforcement operation, but really a uh, fairly large-scale military operation that sought to cut off the uh, Tigray region from large parts of uh, the, uh, the rest of the world. And its only route really to the world was either through uh, airports in the Tigray region and or uh, possible uh, trade traffic through the Afar region and the uh, Sudan. And that was uh, blocked off uh, as well. But now, uh, as, as we know, we're starting to get more information in terms of the, the atrocities. And it had been debated and argued whether genocide was in progress uh, in the Tigray region or not. And we, we, we do know that some of the tactics that have been utilized in the past uh, in terms of uh, suppressing his own people, meaning that of Isaiah Safwerki in Eritrea, uh, we could suspect that some of those practices would migrate their way into the Tigray region, given the fact that large occupational forces of the Eritrean army, uh, quite possibly in excess of 50,000 personnel, uh, had occupied large parts of uh, northern Tigray, from Adagrat, Adwa, Aksum, to, to Shire, and uh, Shiraro, and obviously all of uh, western Tigray, including the uh, largest population center of uh, Hamara. And uh, then we also saw the activities and the invitation of uh, the uh, FANO paramilitary uh, uh, militia uh, uh, groups, very extremist organization within uh, the Amhara or regional government that was being utilized as a security service, security force, uh, in its occupation of parts of the Tigray region. And now we're hearing uh, that up to 300,000 uh, Tigrayan male youths uh, cannot be accounted for. Uh, so again, if we looked at if we look at some of the prior practices of the uh, Eritrean army and uh, its endeavors that uh, that uh, occurs uh, inside of uh, Eritrea, again uh, we we have a, a national camp in which all uh, youth uh, turning to the age of 17, 18, and or military age eventually find their way into camps such as this inside 
of the despotic regime of Eritrea. So the question is, what has happened to all these missing, missing uh, Tigrayans? And uh, one cannot uh, but believe that uh, at some point there were systematic operations, and we have heard reports of this, uh, in, in a variety of cities from Adigrat, Adwa, Aksum, Shire, and in western Tigray, in which individuals were being rounded up and transported to the despotic state of Eritrea. Uh, and in, in some cases, uh, I, I don't want to go as far as saying extermination camps, but uh, there has been some, some rather uh, uh, mysterious operations uh, that have occurred uh, both with the Eritrean army and with elements of regional security forces uh, of the Amhara region that operated inside of the Tigray region. Uh, so again, uh, if, you, if you take these reports and then you look at uh, what has happened inside of the Tigray region, but not inside the Tigray region, even areas in the Amhara region, uh, in which uh, there has been a total communications blackout uh, in the form of no internet access, no communications. Journalists are instantaneously uh, arrested uh, if questions are asked, and uh, they, are, they are immediately uh, identified as uh, supporters of the uh, TPLF, when that is simply not the case. They're just simply there to obtain news stories about what is going on in the former state of Ethiopia, specifically the uh, Tigray region. So you have a couple of different things going on. You again, you have these these uh, these blackouts, uh, news blackouts, uh, communications blackouts, where it's almost impossible for an external uh, uh, actor or an external uh, non-biased journalist uh, to enter the Tigray region. You have the Anaconda strategy being in implemented, in which food and and medical aid are not allowed to uh, enter the Tigray region. And then you have these, these, uh, these, uh, these very nefarious operations uh, by uh, the uh, despotic regime in Eritrea uh, conducting uh, operations in which uh, whole groups of people are going missing uh, inside of the uh, Tigray region. And I think at some point, and probably this will, would, would occur uh, after the, the ending of the Abi Ahmed regime in Addis Ababa, also known as Finfine, uh, as again, uh, information and obtaining information about what really has happened over the course of the year and a half uh, with the war in the Tigray region is very, very hard uh, to obtain. And as Abi Ahmed uh, migrated more towards uh, despotic regimes such as uh, Eritrea, uh, such as the People's Republic of China, uh, such as the uh, the uh, uh, the tyrannic monarchic state of uh, of uh, the United Arab Emirates. Uh, we have seen uh, many of the practices that we see in these other states uh, come into effect inside the former state of Ethiopia. So again, we're, we're seeing a Biamid uh, migrate uh, away from more Western practices and again utilizing uh, many of the practices that you would see in Eritrea, North Korea, and some of these more despotic states. Uh, now with that being said, uh, as the money starts to dry up and uh, he is not going to get a free handout from some of these despotic states, uh, you start to see him now starting to turn back uh, towards Western nation. Now the problem with that is eventually he's going to have to open up and that is going to allow the whole story to be told in terms of what happened inside of the Zagrai region and uh, he cannot allow that. Uh, once the uh, the information comes to light on what actually occurred, and uh, and again, uh, many of these practices that we saw uh, in the Tigray region, we would have to go back to the uh, uh, late 1930s and early 1940s in Germany uh, to see what exactly uh, occurred in terms of what is now occurring inside of uh, the former state of Ethiopia, specifically uh, the Tigray region. I wanted to have a look about look at that and talk about that as that was, is, a, is a huge concern that really isn't being reported uh, in the mainstream media. So again, a couple of different things that are going on in terms of what is happening uh, to this region of, of, of 6 million people, 7 million people, in which uh, we have this anaconda strategy, 
in which food, medicine is not allowed to enter. Uh, complete communications blackout. You cannot access the internet. You cannot uh, get free journalists into the Tigray region. It's very, very difficult, especially coming in through the former state of Ethiopia or landing in Addis Ababa as they are they're immediately detained and refused entry uh, into the Tigray region. And uh, not only that, but again, some of the uh, systematic uh, efforts by the Eritrean army uh, that uh, one could only say would amount to quite possibly extermination efforts uh, by uh, that the despotic nation state who is working jointly with the uh, the Abiy Ahmed regime. So again, uh, I want, needed to talk about that and and really put that to the forefront right now in terms of, of some of the things that we are hearing uh, that is coming out of the region that is that is incredibly incredibly disturbing. And, uh, and rightfully deserves a, a closer look in, in terms of uh, what has happened and what is happening. Have a good day, everybody.